Hey there, and welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna to dive into the science of reading literacy centers, all using decodable books. So many times I hear the question over and over again, what type of literacy centers can I use that are aligned to the science of reading research. Today, that's exactly what we're going to jump into. If you're new here, my name is Anna DeGilio. I was a primary teacher for 23 years, and on this channel, we talk about all things literacy and reading instruction. It's my passion, and it's my mission to help five million children learn to read. My balanced literacy teaching always infused some of the science of reading research without me actually knowing it did. I feel lucky that I had the experiences much early on in my career Career where I understood that phonics needed to be such an important component of instruction. And I think that's so important with where we are right now in education. But again, no better, do better. And that's what we do. So today what we're going to do is we are going to jump in the how do you implement literacy centers in a classroom that are science of reading aligned? In my opinion, literacy centers need to be no or low prep. I don't expect teachers to spend an hour at the coffee machine and three hours planning to change centers and the activities in centers every week. That is just unsustainable for a teacher. So in my belief, centers need to be low prep or no prep. Second is that literacy centers need to be easily implemented. It's really important that the activities the students are going to be doing can be done independently without distracting the teacher that's in small group. So it's important that students can easily understand what is done and what has to be accomplished in that center. Number three, they have to be easy to implement for you as a teacher every week. We do not want you preparing hours and hours to change out your literacy centers every week. It's not a sustainable model. My fourth point, they need to be review. You cannot give students an activity to do in their centers and expect them to do it independently with words or work that they've never seen before. They have to be review skills. Whatever work they're doing in a literacy center must be review of previously taught skills. Those are my four points about the how to implement literacy centers that makes it sustainable for the teacher. When you are implementing the science of reading research in a classroom and you are implementing a structured literacy approach, you will absolutely no doubt be using decodable books. What I suggest is using a decodable book as the jumping off point to all of your literacy centers every week. Let's say last week your students read this book, The Big Job. And this is focused on short O in this particular week of instruction. That means they've already read this book and explicit direct teaching on short O. This is what I suggest you do to accomplish these types of activities in your literacy centers. We're going to talk about five different activities you can implement in your literacy centers, all using a decodable book from a previously taught skill. I suggest right before the week that they're doing these activities, I suggest being able to give them a colored book. And if they don't have the actual physical book in your hand, you have a black and white copy of the book. If you don't have books like this, you can always check out our decodable books. We provide them in digital and printable format. And of course, you could purchase them in collections as well. In our digital program, you can get the printed format and you can get the black and white format. I suggest having an option of both. Activity number one, I call it flag it or post it. I like to call it flag it because I used those little post-it flags. And the purpose of that is have the students have the book in front of them, whether either it's color or black and white. And I love using the black and whites because you can let them have this when they're done with it. This does take a little bit of prep on your part to make sure every child gets one of these books, but you don't have to. You can always use the actual book. And then the activity is the students are going to read through the book that they've already read. Remember, this is a second or third experience with the book and they're going to flag the page and they're going to look for the focus sound in the words that they're going to practice. With this book, you're going to say this week in literacy centers, we're focusing on short O. What I'd like you to do is when you're doing the find it, you're going to flag the short O words in this particular book. So if they're looking at this first page of the book, I'll put it up on the screen right now. Jan has a big job. Dan helps Jan. So which word on this page has a short O in it? And they would either flag it with the little post-it flags, or if you don't have post-it flags, they use a post-it note and they write the word job on here. They read the next page. Jan gets the cobs. Jan gets the cod. They're going to either flag it with their flag it notes, or they're going to post it with their post-it note. And they'll say, 
Cobbs has a short O, so they write Cobbs, and Cod has a short O, they write Cod. So it's basically like they're going on a word hunt for words that have short O or whatever phonic skill you want them to look at. I'll give you a little side tip. I use those little flags in my small group instruction all the time when I was asking them to find specific words that had a specific phonic sound in it. And I actually use those little post-it flags over and over and over again. I took a file folder and I laminated it. And when I was done, I would say, okay, boys and girls, pull out all of your flags when the activity was over. And I had them stick it on a file folder that was laminated so I could use them over and over and over and over again. And we weren't wasting flags for every single lesson. So that was a really easy way of reusing those flags over and over again. After a little bit of time, of course, they lose their stickiness and you could throw them out. But you could very easily use those bunches of times, at least five or six times before they start to lose their stick. So I would just put them in a little laminated file folder and I would use them over and over again. So that's an easy way of saving some money and using those flags over and over again. Activity number two, I call it find, think, brainstorm. Again, we're using decodable books for every single one of these stations. And just for you, for watching this video, you can find this in the description below and you can print this out and use this in your classroom. Here's what the students are going to do. Their goal is to find a word, whatever phonic skill you're talking about. And remember, we're focusing on short O. They take one of the sticky post-it notes and they post it on the page and they're going to find a word with short O. So they read it, Jan has a big job. Dan helps Jan. Where is the short O word on this page? The short O word is job. So they found the word job and then they wrote it down. Now it's time to think. What are words that have a short O sound that either rhyme with job or that have the same word family or the same rhyme at the end. So we think of words and brainstorm words that have the ob ending. So now this is where they're thinking and brainstorming. We have cob, lob, slob, and it's totally up to you whether or not they use real words or nonsense words. My opinion is you can do a combination of both, especially if it comes to an onset rhyme that maybe doesn't have a lot of words that they can brainstorm on. So what they would do is here, they would find it, write it, think, and now brainstorm. Now, we already did a job on the other page. Let's say we choose the word cod. So I found it. I write down cod. Now I could think of other words that have the odd ending. Lod, pod, sod. And they are actually writing words that have that same rhyme at the end. Again, nonsense or real words, you decide what that's going to be. So that is activity number two that's using a decodable book and that's still focusing on that research. There are so many skills here that they're going to be gaining from by doing an activity like find, think, and brainstorm. Again, using decodable books. Let's move into activity number three. Activity number three, I call read, listen, and record. This is going to be dependent on if you have these capabilities in your classroom, if you are a one-to-one -one classroom, or if you have classroom computers. For read, listen, and record, I'm going to share my screen right now and show you how you can accomplish this in your classroom. I'm going to absolutely show you this using our platform, which is our Structured Literacy with Ease platform. And what you're looking at right now is our digital interactive reader. So the students will read the book, The Big Job, as you're seeing right here, on the screen and they'll read it first. They'll go through the whole book using the digital interactive reader and they will practice reading this book again. Now I want them to listen. Within our digital interactive reader on Structural Literacy with Ease, they can listen to the story being read aloud as the words are highlighted on a page. Let's take a quick look at that in action. Watch this. The big job. Jan has a big job. Dan helps Jan. Jan gets the cobs. Jan gets the cod. Now that the students have listened to the book, now it's time to record. This is really easy using our platform, Structured Literacy with Ease, where they can record themselves reading the book and then listen back. So this is how this works. Students will click on the microphone and read this out loud and they're recording themselves. And I'm gonna show you exactly how this works on the platform. And then the students listen back to their recording. Let's make believe I'm the student in this scenario. Jan has a big job. Dan helps Jan. Jan gets the cobs. 
Jan gets the cod. Dan helps fix the cobs in a pot. He helps Jan fix the cod. Jan has a big job. Dan helps Jan. Jan gets the cobs. Jan gets the cod. Dan helps fix the cobs in a pot. He helps Jan fix the cob. And that's how the record feature can work. If you don't have our program, you can't do it this way, but you can absolutely do a read and listen if you have a listening center in your classroom. I recorded so many books one summer and I put them in my listening station and I even have a picture of that. I'll show it to you right here on the screen so you can see I put them all on little mp3 players. So you can easily do that. Yes, it takes a little prep work, but once you've done it once and you have it in your classroom, you'll always have it. This is an option for you as well if you don't have our platform to use. One other thing about our platform is when a student records that book, that recording goes directly into the teacher portal. The teacher can listen to their students reading. So you can see how are they doing with their fluency? How are they doing with their decoding? Are they making any mistakes when they are decoding and sounding out words? You can even download the MP3 files and share them with parents. Ideas and the activities you could do with the digital interactive reader are endless. Definitely check out Structured Literacy with Ease, our digital component, so you could use some of these um, activities in your classroom. And of course, our hundreds and hundreds of decodable books that are on our platform that are there for you for the taking and to use in your classroom that you're now transforming transforming over to really implementing the science of reading research. Now let's move to activity number four. This center is called Map It. Now this is about word mapping and you know how passionate I am about word mapping. We have our word mapping paddles that we sell. What's so great about these paddles is that you could do this whole group or small group because it's magnetic. So you could do a whole group word mapping activity with your entire class and actually see that your students know what they're doing. So I love using these magnetic paddles because you could do this whole group and I just love it. I've got a freebie for you in the description below. You can download this and implement it in your own classroom. I'm here to help you implement science of reading literacy centers. So this is a freebie for you down below. The map it's activity for your literacy literacy center goes like this. So I call this one map it. So what the students are going to do is they're going to take off these sticky notes that you've printed. They're going to read through the book and they're going to find a word that has the focused phonic sound and then they're going to map it. Let's do this page. This page says Bob the dog robs the cobs. The dog hops. Rob did not get Bob the dog. So what the students are going to do, they're going to put their little mapping sticky note on the page and they're going to find a word with the focused short vowel. So we're talking about short O. So the first thing that they're going to do is they're going to pick a word. I'm going to pick the word robs. They're going to say how many sounds in robs and they're going to look at the circles here and they're going to go robs. robs. So now what they're going to do is they're going to color in the circle for each sound. Normally, we move our little magnetic circles for this, but in this case, they're coloring in the circle for each sound. Now that they know that there's four sounds in the word robs, now they're going to write down the graphemes that are associated with those phonemes. So we go, what grapheme or letter matches to the phoneme? R. So they write R. The next sound is ah. What letter or grapheme represents the ah sound. Oh, now the next sound is b -z. Now it has that Z sound, but it is a Z. No, it's an S and they put the S there. Remember, as we get a little further along in our books, we're going to find words with blends and digraphs and words with vowel variants and diphthongs. So then they're going to have to know that the AI goes in one box, the CH goes in one box. As they continue to practice word mapping, they'll know this. This is called Map It, where you take a quick sticky note, they find a word that has that short vowel focus, which is short O for this particular week. They could do four words or six words, whatever you decide to do. You print out a few of these right off of your printer. It's super easy to do and then put it right in the center for them. Very easy to accomplish. But this is 100% aligned to the science of reading research by using decodable books of previously learned skills. So that's activity number four. We call it 
map it. Activity number five, what we're doing here is something I call jot it. What are jot it? I use jot it in my small group instruction all the time. And again, they are focused on post-it notes. So the jot it method when I'm in small groups is that we're doing some type of jotting activity, whether it's words or sentences or a comprehension strategy. When you are focused on the word recognition strands of Scarborough's reading rope, you're dealing with decoding and word recognition and decoding and encoding. You're focused on the lower strands, but we can't forget those upper strands, language comprehension strands of Scarborough's rope. We have to bring those into our instruction. One way you could do that is every week I taught some type of comprehension skill whole group. Whatever that skill was that I taught during whole group, I would bring it into my center activities every single week. So if we focused on problem and solution during my whole group comprehension lesson, I would bring it into a center activity. If we did cause and effect whole group, I would bring it into a center activity. An easy way to do this in your centers is again, bring out your decodable book that they're using every day of the week in their literacy centers. Same book. So they read the book again when they go to the center and they're going to do a jot it. You need to directly align this activity to the lesson that you did whole group that's based on comprehension. Let's say you did a comprehension lesson on story summary or plot and you taught the concept of somebody wanted but so then. So let's say you did this concept as your whole group comprehension skill. There's lots of ways for students to write about the plot of a story. Let's say you taught somebody wanted but so then strategy of summarizing a story. With this strategy, they're going to go to the center. They take off a sticky note. They could either put it on where they're going to keep going back and they first read through the whole story. Who's the somebody about? It's about Jan and Dan. I'm going to write Jan and Dan. So they write that for somebody. What did Jan and Dan want? They wanted to cook outside and do a little barbecue and have some friends over. So over here, I'm going to say wanted to have a cookout. But what happened? The dog stole the cobs. So we say, but the dog stole the cobs. And again, students are writing this on their little post-it note. So we have Jan and Dan wanted to have a cookout, but the dog stole the cobs. So the boys ran after the dog. So I'm going to say the boys ran after the dog and the dog ate the cob. That was the so part of that framework. Then what happened at the end? They had a big mess in the backyard and Dan had to clean up the mess that the dog and the friends made chasing the dog around the backyard. So we could say Dan had a big job to clean up the yard. And that's it. It's an easy way to see your student's ability to summarize a story that they're working on and it's a decodable book. But now they're practicing so many skills, reading, decoding, fluency, summarizing, and encoding. Look at how many skills the students are practicing when they use a decodable book as their literacy center. They're science of reading aligned, they're aligned to the research, they're still aligned to an explicit and systematic scope and sequence, and they're always review because students are only going to use books that they've already had experience with. So if you've done short O last week, short O should be your weekly center for the following week where they're doing all of these activities. These are science of reading aligned literacy centers that are absolutely aligned to the research. You're probably going to have some proponents that say literacy centers are not science reading aligned. When I come on to my videos, I come with the background of reality of what is actually happening in a classroom on a daily basis. And we all know as teachers, we need some independent work time for the students because you've got to pull small groups. And if you are a teacher that does not have a teaching assistant or a teacher's aide, you've got to figure out what your other students are doing because you can't be interrupted during your small group instruction. So this is a way of bringing in science of reading line literacy centers into your classroom using decodable books. So that's it, my friend. Those are five different types of literacy stations that are aligned to the science of reading using only 
decodable books. You need to be really explicit in the way you teach your students how to use these activities in literacy centers. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Mistakes are the best things you can do. It's the best way to learn. I told that to my students every day in my classroom. And I want you to feel the same way. Make mistakes, try things, things that work, things that don't. That's what learning is all about. If we tell our students it's okay, it's okay for us too. I really hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to download the freebies in the description. And if you're looking for uh, decodable books. I've got 16 free decodable books, a link for you here. And the black and white copies are included in those freebies. So head down below and download these freebies that I have for you. You can print out these decodable books that are in black and white. Try them out in your own classroom. See if you like them. And remember, if you are moving more towards the science of reading and structured literacy and your school is looking for amazing decodable books, definitely check out our developing decoders. And again, remember our green collection of decodable books are 100% aligned to UFLY's scope and sequence with a copyright update of 2023. These are brand new. So that's it for me, friends. I really hope you enjoyed this video on five science of reading aligned literacy centers using decodable books in your classroom. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got a lot out of it. And please don't forget to hit that little subscribe button and that little bell next to it so you're alerted every time one of my new videos goes live. Thanks so much for watching and happy reading, friends. Bye for now.